So we've covered solar days and we've covered sidereal days. We've seen how Earth's orbit around the sun, its revolution around the sun, has affected them so that they're slightly different. Now we're going to see uh, what the difference is between a cyanotic month and a sidereal month. Now, months, since I have a picture up here on the or a, the simulation up here with the moon, obviously has to deal with the motions of the moon, not the sun and the earth necessarily. Um, we've been through the phases of the moon, uh, identifying the, their different phases. And old calendars, before we could use the sun to mark what time of year it is, because we know there's 365 days in, in a year, before modern timekeeping, it was much easier for people to use uh, the cycles of the moon to keep track of time. And in fact, our months are based on the different phases of the moon. One complete cycle of moon phases is what we used to base our, our monthly calendar on. Uh, one phase of the moon would be a, a complete month. Now, since we know that it doesn't fit evenly into it nowadays, um, we our months have been expanded and changed, uh, but originally there were, were 12 or possibly even 13 uh, months in a year because depending on which calendar you prescribe to, you would have 12 lunar cycles or 13 lunar cycles in your year. Now, to measure out a lunar month, we're going to again go through the phases of the moon. Uh, we're going to start at the new moon phase. We're going to see how many days and hours it takes to go through complete cycle of phases from new all the way through to full and back into new moon. So I'm not in new moon phase right now, so we're going to play through time until we get there. Now, new moon phase, the entire disk of the moon that we see needs to be in darkness. We can see there's a little sliver of sunlight left. Uh, so we're going to step through here until we get rid of every bit of sunlight. Okay. That's pretty close. Now, here we can see the date is November 1st. Uh, the universal time is zero, so it's like being right at midnight. <clears throat> this is going to make our, our time calculations much, much easier. <clears throat> and we're in our new moon phase. So we're going to go through a full month of phases, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, and we're getting closer to that new moon phase here as we're in our waxing crescent. Uh, we've stepped through uh, almost a full 27 days and 16 hours. Again, we started November 1st. So we got to take that day off, so it's not 28 days, it's 27 days and 16 hours. And we're going to see just exactly, again, uh, how long it takes to remove all of this uh, crescent phase until we get back to our new moon. Pretty good right there. So <clears throat> we started November 1st. It's now November 30th. So we subtract those two. We get 29 days. We started at zero hours and we have 12 hours now universal time, which is half a day. So that gives us for a, uh, excuse me, that gives us for a lunar month, one complete cycle of the moon's phases, 29 and a half days. So we've looked at sidereal days, we've looked at solar days, we've even looked at a cyanotic month, which is also known as a lunar month, based on the phases of the moon. This last part is on what is known as a sidereal month. Sidereal is meaning star, and uh, it occurs or uh, happens when the Earth, the moon, and a star are lined up. <clears throat> In this case, we're going to use a set of stars, a small cluster known as the Pleiades. In the constellation of Taurus, you can see here's the Taurus's nose and his eyes, and he's got some big horns going up this way, and the Pleiades are actually sitting on his back, like so. We'll get into the, the, the uh, Greek mythology of that later on, which is kind of interesting, but for now, this is the alignment we're looking at. We're going to measure how much time it takes for the moon to go all the way around the Earth and return to this exact same alignment. This is a uh, sidereal month. 
got it set in days. Uh, we need to look at then the time. We've got November 16th, 11 a.m. I'm going to step it through the number of days, and then uh, if we have a little bit left over, how many hours, uh, it works out to get this exact same alignment. So we're on days again. November 16th is where we started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 days, 27 days gets us really close. So let's change it back to hours. So we're at 27 days, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours allow us to see the entire Pleiades again. Don't worry about the rotation. That's just uh, uh, a change in, uh, since they, uh, these things are apparently going across the sky. So we've got 27 days, six hours, which works out to be 27 days and a quarter, uh, which is really close to 27.3 days. That uh, is the exact measurement. Now, we need to figure out why. Why is there a difference between a uh, lunar month and a sidereal month? And again, it has to deal with Earth's orbit. It's revolution around the sun. With a lunar month, all we're interested in is getting through the phases of the moon. And to do that, the moon basically has to go all the way around the Earth and return till the alignment of the Earth, moon, and the sun. All right? In a sidereal uh, month, which is a little bit shorter, all we're interested in is realigning the Earth with the distant star, which uh, this is not to scale. These angles are not the way it is. It's really just 360 degrees. Um, <clears throat> because these stars are so distant, if I were to stretch this out, eventually this line, which is where the moon originally was, and this line, if this was very, very, very distant, uh, would actually become pretty much parallel. Now, with that being said, if they were parallel, <clears throat> I know it doesn't show it in this, I promise they would be, um, that would be 360 degrees of rotation, or excuse me, revolution around the, uh, the Earth. Now, since the sun is much, much closer than that, this, the moon's got to go a little bit further in order to realign with the sun, in order to get through its complete phases. So uh, a sidereal uh, uh, month is really just 360 degrees of revolution around the Earth, so that distant star, uh, the Earth and the Moon realign themselves, where as the Sun being much, much closer would appear to shift a little bit in the night sky or the day sky. And the Moon would have to go a little bit farther, in fact about two days, uh, in order to get them lined back up so that you can go from a new Moon phase all the way back into another new Moon phase. That's the difference. It's just based on the Earth's revolution around the sun. If the sun didn't revolve around the sun, a sidereal day and a solar day would be the same, and a lunar and a uh, sidereal month would also be the same. 